Reality is improving in Puget Sound, but warnings are extended for days thanks to wildfire smoke. And while help is on the way from Mother Nature tonight, there are plenty of questions about how the fires are being fought. Thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Jamie Tompkins. And I'm David Rose. In some cases, those fires are being allowed to burn. Fox 13's Matthew Smith has been tracking the Bolt Creek fire, one of the fires contributing to all of this smoke. So, Matt, what have you learned tonight? Well, David, Jamie, when it comes to the Bolt Creek fire, this fire in particular is allowed to have a part of the fire burn. They're allowing the interior to burn, if you will. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not fighting this fire. I mean, hey, right now, there's a lot of firefighters. I've seen them coming and going. There's more than 100 tents behind here in Monroe where they've set up base of operations about 35 minutes away from where they're battling this fire. But the bottom line is, at 14,000 acres, no amount of manpower with that terrain could snuff this thing out. As cars cruise by fire crews along US-2, the fire line for parts of the Bolt Creek fire, smoldering debris catches your eye. Now, weeks into this fire that spewed smoke into the sky, not just here, but throughout Puget Sound, there's a reality. Even if crews can grow containment from its current 41%, the firefighters alone can't put a fire this size with this terrain out. We may have it contained, but it's going to take more water and more personnel than we would ever have available to us to get it so, you know, completely out. I mean, that's where Mother Nature comes into play. This week, air quality around Puget Sound tanked. At times, we were among the worst areas to breathe air anywhere in the world. It hasn't been fun, like really big headache, like not feeling well at all. Emily Gifford and her husband Nick aren't far from the Bull Creek fire, and they've been breathing all of this in often. The smoke comes in and it's been getting I feel like it comes in waves and then some days it's like worse than others, or at least you can see it more or smell it more. And that smoke has grounded air support at time, including parts of this past weekend. I'm hearing a lot of, why don't you put a lot more aircraft on it? You know, over the weekend, there was so much smoke and so much wind that at times we couldn't use them effectively. So we did not put them there. Watch the traffic. That doesn't mean fire crews have stopped working. But there's a number of reasons why crews have allowed parts of the Bolt Creek fire to burn. As you heard, the smoke, yes, weather does affect how and where wildfires are fought. Suppression or snuffing the fire out isn't really feasible given the size, so you pick your battles. Not to mention the dangerous remote terrain mixed throughout the 14,000 acres. We're not disengaging from the fires. We're still doing our best. It is, you know, just impossible to, to quote unquote, put them out at this point. So Geisler says that you need several inches of rain. You don't need a little rain and then go right back to dry because these things will power through that. Now, it is pretty interesting how this all works. You know, when it comes to federal lands, you can allow fires to burn if they meet certain criteria. They essentially use these like prescribed fires, those fires that are done and set on purpose so that you can try to avoid these large, massive wildfires like we're talking about the Nakia so to the south of us. Uh, but in the case of this situation, uh, the Bolt Creek fire, the one that we're talking about here, uh, while well, I'm here in Monroe with the firefighters battling it, uh, we're talking about federal lands, state lands, and private lands. And by Washington law, if this, you're talking about state and private lands, you have to fight this fire. So that's what they're doing. They're continuing to fight the fire, but strategically, they're allowing parts of it to burn. And it sounds like we'll have to wait for Mother Nature to really get this thing under control. Right, we're live in Monroe tonight. Matthew Smith, Fox 13 News. And Matthew.